Hello, welcome to the Grumpy Gobbler channel. My name's Noah, and in today's video, I'm going to go over a couple of things that have changed on the Forerunner. I've installed a new stereo, and I've also made a modification, not really a modification, but I've started using my S-Pod triggers on my S-Pod to control my front lights instead of having to control lights individually. And I was gonna go camping this weekend, but while it looks beautiful outside here right now, and it is, it, where I was going to go camp, it was extremely windy. And I don't mind standing around in 10 degree weather and being really cold, but wind is another animal. And so I didn't want to stand around in the wind. So you get this. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing or not. And uh, thanks for coming along. Okay. I'm going to go over my new stereo. This is the Sony ES9500 or 9500ES. I don't know. Whatever it is. I got this from Trail Grid Pro and it comes as a complete kit. So they pre-wire it to fit in the Forerunner. This kit is specifically for the Forerunner. They also have a kit for the Tacoma. And I think they have a kit for the Jeep JL, but I'm not sure about that. What do I care? I'm a Forerunner owner, so I don't care about Jeeps. And uh, I got this for a couple of reasons, a few reasons maybe. One is the screen is a lot bigger, obviously, than the stock one. And this, the screen is fantastic. It's I think it's a 10.1 inch and it's HD, so it's really crystal clear, and uh, it's just fantastic. I love the screen. And another reason is this has Apple CarPlay, as you can see on here, and the I really wanted to have Apple CarPlay, and this is a 2016 Forerunner, so it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, and I wanted to be able to control my music, see my Onyx and Gaia maps on the screen here instead of having another separate device. And there's a couple other things that I'll show you as I go through that, uh, that are other reasons why I purchased this. So I'll first go through the, um, the installation process. And that was really, really simple because they pre-wire it. It comes with the module to interface with the forerunner and so the steering wheel controls work and um, the, it's all just plug and play. And like I said, they pre-wire it. So it's as simple as taking out your old uh, uh, stereo and taking out the vents. You have to take out the vents and mount them into this new kit. And I think it's called a Metra kit. But this kit here is all new, comes with the kit and put the vents in the hazard switch in and then it's as simple as plugging it in and <laughs> bolting it in and then you're essentially done it was really that simple it probably took me an hour to put this in and so it was really simple and i really liked that and so that was simple and let's go on to carplay so I've pressed CarPlay and it's wireless CarPlay. So it's not wired. You don't have to have your phone connected. And it's really quick to connect. When I start it, within seconds, Apple CarPlay is connected with my phone. So I, I think there's been some other systems that are not as fast to connect and have been glitchy. This has not been glitchy at all. It's perfect. And so as you can see, when I turn on Apple CarPlay, all my apps that are Apple CarPlay compatible show up here. I can scroll through and see what apps I have. Use the phone, text messaging, and all that stuff. And so I can play my Pandora through here, directly through here, and I can see it on a big, nice big screen. And you can tell the, the screen is really responsive or fairly responsive. Uh, I'm sure there's better systems out there that come from factories, but this is perfect for me. And I really like being able to control Pandora through here instead of having to go onto my phone and do it. 
Another thing is the uh, Onyx Off-Road app and the Gaia app that I use through here. I kind of use these uh, depending on what I'm doing. I really like the Onyx app. I like the screen better. And I, or I like the map better. Be, the only thing I don't really like on Onyx is when you're downloading offline maps, you can only do uh, smaller areas. You can't do a big state or something like that. Uh, and on Gaia, you can. And so I don't, you have to do a whole bunch of blocks to cover a big area. But you can see that all my waypoints that are on my Gaia are on here. All my routes, tracks, whatever, they're all on here, color-coded the same way as the way you saved them. And I can zoom in either through this. Pinch and zoom sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. But I can zoom in this way. And you can see it's pretty darn responsive. So that's really nice. It's really nice to have my Onyx on a big screen like this. I don't have to run an iPad or a tablet and have that separate. So this works out perfectly. On the Gaia, kind of the same thing. And this map layer is the map layer that you have stored on your phone. So you can change map layers on this, but it's the same thing. I can zoom out. See, you can see the Gaia does not seem to work as well as, uh, as Onyx. Like that's as far as I can zoom out on Gaia. So not quite as user friendly as Onyx, but I still like it, but it's just not quite as, uh, user-friendly as Onyx. If Onyx ever allows me to download bigger maps, I will probably solely use Onyx. Anyways, that's uh, Apple CarPlay on this. Another thing to note on here is there's no volume knob, which I kind of miss. There's volume buttons up here, a home button up here, and track uh, buttons and a voice button. I've never used uh, those up there. These two lines down here are customizable buttons. So you can customize them and have them do whatever you want. I have set the lower left hand one to be uh, my home button and the button on the lower right I set to mute. So if I need to mute real quick, all I have to do is press that button. And like I said, they're really responsive. I mean, sometimes it's almost weird sometimes that I, I feel like my finger hasn't even touched it yet and it's already doing what I want it to do. So that's really nice. For an, uh, I think it's $65 extra, you can get the Sirius XM module and I have that. So now I have, I have Sirius XM on here because I was already subscribed to Sirius XM. So I just had to move it over from my old stereo to this one, which was easy. And now all my channels are on here. And again, you can see it's pretty responsive. goes to the channels really quickly. It works really well. Siri, this Sirius XM works really, really well on here. And I think that's all I can need to tell you about that. But the screen looks really nice. The interface looks really nice for Sirius. Now, another reason I wanted to get this is it hooks to your vehicle through the ODB2 connector. And so it has vehicle information. And so by clicking that, like I said, this is a 2016 4Runner. So the only thing for tire pressure you have is an idiot light. And so if you're off-roading and you've lowered your temperature, your temperatures, <laughs> yeah, pressures, then all you have is your idiot light on. And if you do something and you start losing air in one of the tires, you're never going to know it. So when I'm off-roading and I'm aired down, if I'm not looking at another screen, I tend to have this screen up because I can keep my eye on all four tire pressures and ignore the right rear. It's uh, low on pressure. I just need to put some air in that. You can also see it has the battery voltage and the check engine uh, light is there. So if the check engine light comes on, this will turn red and whatever screen you're on, 
this screen will pop up and show that you have a check engine light. Not that you can't see that in the dash, it shows here as well. Also it shows door indicators, so it shows that this door is open. And that's about it for this info screen. It also has gauges. And so you can customize these gauges and put whatever you want in here, whatever's available, which is frankly a huge amount of stuff that you probably never need. I have voltage in here, and this none of this is populated because the, the Forerunner is not running. Miles per gallon, attack, which is obviously unnecessary because there's one in the dash. Coolant, which is, again, unnecessary because there's one in the dash. The big one on here is trans temp. If you're off-roading and uh, or serious off-roading, you want to pay attention to your trans temp as well as if you're towing, you want to pay attention to your trans temp. I don't tow, but when I'm off-roading, I'd like to keep tabs on my trans temperature, trans fluid temperature. There's another screen. You can just put more stuff on here if you really want to in a forerunner. You can do a 0 to 60 time and measure your 0 to 60 time, quarter mile time. Um, and we all know forerunner owners love to measure their zero to 60 time it's there so there you go that is really nice to have uh, i love everything that this thing has this is really this was really really worth it to me and let me think if there's anything oh yeah there's another thing you can also it's connected to your rear view camera of course another thing you do if you tow you can turn on that rear view camera at any time so if you want to keep tabs on your trailer, you can just turn on the camera and just leave it going and keep your eyes on whatever you're towing. You can also connect two additional cameras to this. So if you wanted a front facing camera, a camera facing, I don't know, whatever, you, <laughs> you could put another camera in here. And that's really nice. I think that's about all I have to say on this. Um, I have zero regrets about doing this at all. It's not cheap. It's, I think, $1,500, $1,600. So it's not cheap, but actually, that's not that bad for what you get. Uh, this this interface, the screen, is perfect. This is uh, There's an anti-glare coating on here, so you don't get a lot of reflections. I mean, you can see a little bit of a reflection, but it's very muted. It's very matte. And so I've never had a sun glare problem, even in bright sunlight, although you can see by the position of this, it's not going to get a lot of glare, but I, I just don't get any glare whatsoever, or not whatsoever, but I get very, very little. You'll notice that this screen, because it's so big, is away from the dash. This is about one and a half inches, maybe, if I had to guess. You can see I put my hand down here. And while that makes it look like an aftermarket stereo, it actually makes it more convenient because my hand is actually closer to this. This is a little closer for me to operate as I'm driving. And um, so I really like that. Uh, some people may not. And from your point of view, it may look like it's blocking a lot of the vents, but it's not. I can see most of my vents. I can feel the air when I have the air on. It's not blocking any of my buttons down here or dials down here. So I can get to everything and still have a big screen. And this this kit, this Metra kit, um, the black on here matches perfectly with everything else in the interior. So it, that part looks really factory. If you viewed other videos of mine, you may have noticed that the uh, big mounting uh, thing I had up top, where I had a whole bunch of devices mounted on the top, is no longer here. I could have mounted that, but I, I wanted to try to get rid of some of the clutter on the dash. Another reason for this thing is get rid of some of the clutter. So I only have my ham radio and I have my in-reach mount. So when I'm off-roading or, or camping or whatever, I have my in-reach right here. And when I need to, I have my ham radio right here. And while it may look in your view that this is blocking my view, it's not at all. Um, I, I can see over this and still see dashboard. It's not blocking 
any outward visibility. So that's really good. I think that about covers this thing. Um, if I'll try to remember to put a link in the description down to, lo to below, if I could speak English, <laughs> and you could buy one. Like I said, they make it for the Forerunner, obviously. They make it for the Tacoma and possibly the JL. One more note, this metric kit also comes in the silver. So if you have the silver dash, they have a, a silver one. And that's it. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them. Okay, the other thing I did was I've had my S-Pod for years and I knew about triggers, but I never decided to set them up. And so I decided to set up triggers to make it easier to turn on all my front lights. And it was really, really easy. I can't believe it took me this long to do it. So what I did was I spliced into my fog light uh, circuit and ran the uh, wires to or ran a splitter off that wire that I spliced into to the S-Pod Bantam and ran it to three outputs. And so when I turn on my fog lights, you'll see that three lights turn on. All my front lights turn on. And it's all by just doing this. So off, switches are off. On, the switches are on. And what that did is made it easier for me to turn them all off, on and off very quickly. So if I'm going down a dark road and I have all my LEDs on, I can turn them off really quick if a car is approaching rather than trying to press these buttons really quick. And that became a royal pain in the butt because there's no tactile feel to this screen. And so <laughs> I ended up blinding a lot of people and to all those people, I'm sorry. So <laughs> there you go. And this is perfectly, and it took me <laughs> really not that long, probably an hour to do it. And uh, one thing to note is on the Forerunner, the fog lights, for the fog light switch to be active, the headlights have to be on. And so, but usually if you have your, want your front LEDs on, you're going to have your headlights on anyway. So, just a note. There you go. Easy peasy. You can also see where I mounted my screen for my S-Pod up on the ceiling. And that works out really well because now I don't have to press those buttons a lot. Anyways, hope this was useful to somebody. <laughs>